Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Jonas Podcast. Today, we have one of my worst friends here with me today, <laughs> Mr. Gary Johnson. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks so for glad not to being be here. here, but being here at the same time. Um, Gary is a close friend of mine, and I've had the pleasure of getting to know Gary through a networking group that we're in. It's uh, called Provisors, and Provisors stands for Professional Advisors, where essentially there's many groups all throughout I think now we're in multiple states, but mostly Southern mm -hmm. California for now. And these groups essentially have white collar professionals. The white collar mm -hmm. professionals range from lawyers to marketing individuals. We have real estate people, finance people. Um, you might know about BNI, like BNI will have chiropractors and essential oils person, but ours typically only has businesses that deal with money. And so it's a fantastic group. And Gary just happens to be the leader, which is horrible all in itself. <laughs> but, Very true. But actually, one of the reasons why I love our group is because Gary does lead it. He has Thank a you. horrible sense of humor. He's always making fun of everyone and nobody Especially loves Especially you. Especially me. I'm an easy target, though. So you are. It's easy to go there. And uh, Gary Johnson is an individual who has been helping lawyers for the last decade, essentially build their books of business and grow their businesses through two different businesses that he is an owner in, which is J2 Marketing and LinkedIn for Lawyers. He's able to help give lawyers advice and help guide them on how to use LinkedIn better and also just how to better market themselves. And so, I mean, I'm going to be picking your brain today and getting a Perfect. free free session while go. I got you here. Yes, and more than I'm, happy to. Yeah, and I got a lot of questions. And really, too, we just want to be giving people information that they can take and they can use on their own. And obviously, at the end, if anybody needs to reach out to Gary, He's going to give all the contact information so you can do so. But I'm excited about this podcast, obviously, because I'm a lawyer sometimes, half the time, maybe a quarter of the time. That's right. That's <laughs> but, right. Um, when you're not in Europe. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not in Europe, when I'm not in Spain, when I'm not exactly. in Ibiza. But nonetheless, it. today's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Gary, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I have listened to your podcast. They're always awful, but um, <laughs> but your guests are great. You uh, you need a little bit of work. I mean, but, I'm doing uh, my worst. <laughs> no, but I, but in all honesty, I've always respected you, and I love love what you're doing, and I love just your story in general because it is a deep story, um, and I love how vulnerable you are with your audience and with your community, and I think it's the best way to do business. Period. I mean. That's one of the biggest things about marketing is being vulnerable and being authentic. And you are definitely that with your crazy hats and, and, and shit that you've got. I love it. I always love it. So thank I, you for having me on. I really, really appreciate what you're saying. It makes me blush in like a way because it's definitely something I've struggled with over the years, trying to figure out like just who I am as a person. Yeah. And like also a lot of times when you're a lawyer, like people don't want to see that you're traveling or, or that's at least what I felt. They don't yeah. want to see you in these outfits that is anything other than a suit. And so now it's just recognizing that people want to do business with you as an individual. Amen. And the truest expression of who you are as an individual is who they want to do business with. And so the more that you own who you are, whether it's, you know, for me, it's wearing hats, traveling around the world, doing fun stuff all the time. Like that's just who I am. Yep. The more successful I've become throughout that process. And so it's awesome to see somebody who's in my space giving me the recognition. So thank you so oh, much absolutely. for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. it. So I guess in, in your space, right. When you're working with with lawyers, do you work with like specific types of lawyers? Or are you like, do you have a specific niche, or just really whoever might need help within the marketing and LinkedIn realm? So <clears throat> it's always a great question. And what I have found the commonality with my clients is they charge a lot of money. Okay. <clears throat> and I say that because if they charge a lot of money, they have to build relationships, mm. and that is where my sweet spot comes into play. Is how do I get them to be confident yeah. about them building the right relationships, about the right messaging that they're putting out there, about being authentic um, yeah. in themselves. And so when you have that, look, <clears throat> I love Google. I love it um, in certain industries. For instance, your industry, if you're not doing Google and you're not doing SEO, you're missing the boat in a big, big, big way. Um, but if you are like one of my um, uh, clients, is a um, general, um, is a GC. Um, and he charges $1,200 an hour. And you think, oh God, he's gotta be extremely successful. He is successful, but he also is a type A that wants to get to that next level. He's bringing in a certain amount of millions of dollars, but he wants to go to the next level and he needs to untap all of those different things because he builds all of his relationships. What's a GC a for the for the guests? Sorry, general counsel. General counsel. General counsel. General so counsel. he works with companies, 
as their lawyer per se, but he's the only lawyer for them. So he does all of their business transactional stuff, negotiating contracts, um, and um, doing all of their employment stuff. Um, and he primarily works with large companies. He's with a AMLAW. So he's, he's in a very large firm. Let's just put it that way. And, um, but he does a great job for them. And what he's trying to do is get in front of more people that can refer him business. Mm. And that's the building the relationships um, with people. Okay. And when you said in the beginning um, that attorneys, specifically attorneys that charge a lot of money, mm -hmm. I mean, myself being an attorney, I guess, what does that mean? Do, do you mean people that charge like higher percentages or like a high hourly rate? Like High what, hourly rate. High hourly yep. rate. What would yep. you consider a high hourly rate? I would say anything north of $600 an hour. Got it. And so those are primarily the clientele that you're working Correct. with. Correct. And you're trying to help them basically build their relationships and their marketing so they can market to other businesses or other lawyers to get them more business. Correct. Yep. That's okay. exactly right. And I mean, don't don't get me wrong. It's like, do I work with people that are 400? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My goal is to get them to that six, $700 an hour. And usually they do not have the confidence to get that. Yeah. And it's, and it's actually, this is a very easy thing to do. And, yeah. and it's like, oh, but this is a secret. It's not. What you do is if you're at $400 an hour and you are marketing correctly and you're bringing in business, what's going to happen? You're going to be too full of business, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, what do I do? If I can't even take on this business, if I, if I cannot service the clients that I have, then I'm not going to do any marketing. I got to put a pause on that. I got to stop doing business development, which is the biggest mistake. I tell them instead of pausing it, you keep your foot all the way on the gas and you now go from four to $500 an hour. Mm. And they always say, but they're not going to pay that. I'm like, but you would have never gotten them anyways because you would have taken your foot off of the gas for marketing. Yeah. And if you continue to do that, will people say no? Absolutely. But you'll find that more and more people will do that and they will continue to go up in the ranks. I'll give you a specific example. I got a phone call two months ago from the managing partner of an estate planning firm. Mm. And he was swearing up the up a storm at me. Mm. You effing piece of shit, da 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 da. And I was at you. At, yeah, at me. Yeah, what an asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm very good friends with this guy. Yeah. The reason why is because his partner, who I was working with, is now the number one rainmaker and making the most amount per hour. <laughs> and she started at 350. And now she has eclipsed everybody and he's pissed at me because of his ego. Yeah. And and he was part serious, but part like joking yeah, about he it. Yeah. With you, he yeah. was messing with me because yeah. that's the sort gotcha. of relationships. But that's the kind of stuff that I love to see. That's my passion is to see people that go, I didn't think that that was possible, mm. that I was worth that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're worth that and a whole lot more. I mean, awesome. especially when I see like that um, clients that um, charge $1,200 an hour, the difference between them and a $600 an hour, there is no difference. Yeah. It's almost There's like no, a mindset. It is exactly a mindset. And, and we need to change that. Yeah. And it's that, like them believing that they're worth $1,200. Yes. Obviously, you need to be providing the value. Of course. Yeah, yeah of course. But, yep. in, but in a sense, like being able to provide that value in a more structured way, in a way that can relate more with clients and yep. relate more with other business owners. Yep. Cool. Okay. So before we get into the nuances of your business, let's talk about like some things about you. I just want to kind of like understand how you got into this business, but I want to ask you like, what, what is it you think you like your superpower that allows you to be so good at what you do? Like what is one thing that stands out before, like above other companies or other people that might do what you do? So there, I, I would say there's two different things to that. One is I take a contrarian viewpoint about a lot of different things in marketing. I am okay, what not does contrarian typical. mean? So contrarian is the opposite of what we've been taught. Okay. For instance, one of my biggest things is networking, right? We all network. Yeah. And I see so many people doing networking wrong. Oh, yeah. And the reason why they're doing it wrong... Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you've seen them too. Yeah. Um, but the reason why is because when they are going into a room and they're networking with people, their mindset is, it's all about me. Yeah. How do I keep the attention on me? What am I going to say? Um, how can I dazzle them? How can I one-up them? Yada, yeah. yada, yada. And I say, you need to be completely gone. Your whole purpose when you're networking is to get to know people, yeah. build relationships. So you should be asking questions. You should be figuring out how does how can I make that person successful? Yeah. And all of that stuff is contrarian because especially with attorneys, they're like, they go in, they bulldoze it, yeah. and they go, 
ah, it's not working. Not working doesn't work. No, it works. It does work if you do it right, yeah. right? And that's one of the things. Another thing that I would say is my superpower. Well, before we go on to yeah. that, I actually have some comments that I want to make about the networking thing. Because yeah. I heavily network. I don't, I, I don't know do. if you know, but I'm in BNI and I I'm do. improvisers. And what I will say is like exactly what you said. If you're literally helping someone because you want something from them, they feel it. Yes. And they know. And yes. it's all about your intentions when it comes to relationships. What like I my, a little tip that I would have is like for example, just to like keep yourself fresh and that you're actually doing things for genuine purposes. When you go to lunch with somebody, I always ask them to tell me their story first because I want to give them the genuine care and attention and I've learned if I give someone the true intention that they're asking for and that they're looking for, then when it comes to me telling my story, they always pay attention and they give me the attention that I deserve. Yep. And not only that, but one thing that I would like to see in improvisers is BNI, does, they track things, right? Like, and, and the main thing that I like to track is I like to see not how much money, of course, it's great to see how much money I receive just to know those statistics, right. but I like to see how much I've given to other people. Yeah, and sure. for me, I've given over twice the amount that I've given to others that I've gotten in revenue yep. to my company. And it's and it's really the statement of the more you give, the more you'll receive. And if you do it from a place of actually genuinely trying to help people, they will genuinely try to help you and it will come back tenfold later. Amen. I couldn't agree with yeah. you more. It's the go-giver attitude, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is one of my favorite books by Bob Berg. Yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Like, for instance, if you're going to lunch with somebody like you had talked about, yeah. you should do your research yeah. beforehand. And what I like to do is I usually have one or two questions about them personally yeah. that I want to throw out there that is going to make them go, whoa, yeah. like, Holy cow. I'll give you a great example like of this. Like you did your homework. You didn't just show up to a meeting and That's then That's exactly right. Like, oh my God, I hate when people are like, oh, so what do you do? Like I said, yeah, like when you show up to a dinner, it's like, what the fuck? You came to, to lunch with me or you came to hang out with me and you don't even know what I'm doing or what yeah. I'm about. Like, what, like it shows that you're not interested, shows that you actually don't care about the meeting. I mean, there's so many things that cascade from that. But if you're going to take an hour of my time or I'm going to give you an hour of my time, yep. and, and I'm saying negative terms, let's say that. If we're going to share an yes. hour of our time, yep. we should both go going there to the meeting intentionally and to understand why we're there and to come to, to a resolution or try to actually help each other and not right. waste each other's time. Totally. Because when somebody does ask you the question, so Joe, what do you do for a living? Yeah. Immediately you're like, really? Yeah. And then you don't trust that person. You yeah. might start to like them, but they are now in a negative position yeah. for themselves. And it's yeah. all subconscious. Like we are like, I don't know what it is about this person, but I just don't like them. Yeah. Because they didn't do the research. Really? No, 100%. I agree with you. And and also just like asking questions when people talk to you, not just letting them talk and talk and talk. Because I mean, there's sometimes like, like I, because I do, I've done so much networking. I've met with like so many financial planners, for example. Okay. And a lot of them have the same spiel. And I just cut them off in the beginning. And I'm like, hey, look, stop talking. <laughs> tell me what you do best. <laughs> like, just tell right. me what you do best. Because I need yeah. to know what you are the absolute best at so that I can remember you when somebody's like, I need help with this. And then immediately my brain is like, great, I do this. And, and the reason I bring up financial planners, is I think there's certain professions that just do so many things. And if you're not niched in the sense of like being able to explain or tell others exactly what you do, yep. it makes it almost impossible for people to refer you business because I don't know how to refer you business because I don't know what you do. Yep. You told me a billion things, I'm not going to remember anything. It's so yeah. true. And especially with financial advisors, I typically get the, well, I work with people that have over a million dollars in, in investable assets. Yeah. I'm not going to ask somebody, hey, Joe, yeah. how much do you have to invest? Because yeah. I got some. Oh, you only have $2 million. Uh, he, he, His threshold is $5 yeah. million. Like, how do you even have that conversation? Exactly. You can't. And so when you don't, that person doesn't get any business. I'm not going to refer them any business, but I, I think you are absolutely right on. What's your niche? What are you great at? Yeah. Like, what is really... Like, we have a financial advisor in our, in our provisors group, Ashley. Ashley is so right on in regards yeah. to what, I mean, who she services because she services women and she also looks at things in a very holistic way. Yeah. Do, does other people? Yes. But she looks at it in regards to how does your investing mm. go with your values? Yeah. That's huge. So if somebody has no values, they're not a good fit for her. Yeah. You know, as opposed to somebody who's like, I really care about the environment. You need to work with Ashley. Yeah. Just because you're a woman, you care about that. It goes right over there. Yeah. So, um, but back to your point of doing your research beforehand, it takes five to 10 minutes. 
Yeah. It really does. And for people to not do it, it makes a world of difference immediately. Because my whole thing is you have an hour with somebody. Typically what I would find people doing is they connect with them at minute 50, minute 55. And I say, no, we need to connect within the first two minutes. Yeah. And the only way that I can do that is by asking you a question that's personal about you that yeah. I might have found on LinkedIn or your website that says, Joe, you know what? Before we talk about all this business stuff, yeah. can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. And you'll go, um, you'll be like, yes, like yeah. to ask me, right? And then I'll ask you something like, hey, I saw that you just got back from such and such yeah. place. How was it? Why did you go? That's going to take our conversation in so many different ways. But here's yeah. the cool thing is I get to learn about you. Yeah, I get to understand, would this be a good connection? Yeah. Would we be good to either be friends, be good referral sources, whatever it may be? But it also puts away all the bullshit that we, yeah. we put up all these guards until we really can trust somebody. And as soon as you ask somebody a personal question, trust is almost immediate because I'm sure you've heard this. I don't know what it is about you, Joe. But I could tell you anything. Yeah. You're almost like a therapist in a certain way. And it's like, yeah, it's because I'm doing X, Y, and Z, which we don't say. You just go, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, I guess it's just my charm or whatever. Yeah. Uh, my sixth sense of humor. But that is a very, very important part in marketing. And yeah. people don't get that. And yeah. that's why I say the contrarying aspect of this is such an important element because most times people say, okay, if you're going to a networking event, you need to be saying these stories. You need to be saying this is what your value proposition is. And then as soon as you say it, move on to the next person. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Networking is marriage. I stand those people. Yes, it's not a one-night stand. It's marriage. No offense. <laughs> that, that's so, fair. Uh, <laughs> I don't like you that much. <laughs> um, Thank you. My but, wife thinks you too. <laughs> but um, what, I, what I wanted to also say too is like I try to treat things now that I've done a podcast for a while now. When I go to lunches with people, I think of it almost like it's like a podcast episode. It's like mm. – Okay, so somebody gave me an offering, which was, what is the definition of presence? Okay, so the definition of presence, in my opinion, after it was explained to me, is that the person in front of you is the most important person in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you can treat somebody like that, then they're going to give you typically that same respect back, at least in my experience. Yes. And so when you go to a lunch or when you're going to spend time with somebody, that time has been blocked off. I mean, for me, it's a big deal. It takes me a half hour, hour to drive there. I'm losing half my day to go meet with this person. So ask yourself, why am I meeting with this person? What is the intention? Mm -hmm. And what is the conversation I'm trying to have? And also, too, this is an opportunity. You're sitting in front of somebody who is an actual specialist at what they do, and they're willing to give you unlimited free information for the sake of hanging out for an hour. Yep. So why not take that opportunity to learn something cool and do something cool? And also just a tip, too, that I recommend to everyone, if you're just getting into whatever you're doing and you're networking with people, always pay for lunch. You always give your credit card. Just do it and give it to the person. And it's just – it's a. and I understand this can seem like I'm doing it for, like, selfish reasons – but it's just a sign of gesture of thank you to that person for their time and also giving you that free information. And mm-hmm. I can't tell you how much business I've received just out of a little gesture of a $30 lunch. Yeah. And it just goes so far. And you just give your credit card. When you go to the bathroom, they won't even know you did it. And then they're always stoked and happy at the end. And then you leave that person with a good note and just they feel fantastic Absolutely. when they walked away from you. I love that aspect because we need to go out to lunch more often. Hey, let's go to lunch. <laughs> no, but I'm let's go saying. for drinks. <laughs> no, I don't drink. Uh, all right. But I'm actually a good drinking but drinking buddy. buddy? Okay, got it. So you're the I'll DD. fuck with you like there's no well, tomorrow. <laughs> let's go to a steakhouse. We'll go get a nice steak. Done. Are you down for like that? Mastro's, yeah, like Mastro's. Like, Mastro's. like your holiday yeah, 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 party. Yeah, exactly. Good. So, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that works for but me. But you, you know what? But you're absolutely right. It's those little things, though. Yeah. And that is a great tip for anybody who is listening to it because you're right. You are spending an hour with them. They're spending an hour with you. Yeah. Make the most out of it. Don't be like, okay, I got to be going to next meeting and then I got to go here. When you're present, they feel it. Yeah. And here's the other thing, though. The other people may not be present. The other people may be very distant. Yeah. And that's actually a good thing. And I'll tell you the reason why is because we are not meant to connect with everybody. And when we know, okay, this person isn't this person yeah. isn't in my community, you just spent an hour with them. You paid for lunch, but you know you don't have to follow up with them. You know you don't have to build a relationship yeah. because they're not your people, right? Yeah. And you get that, you get that like, oh, okay. What I tell my clients is don't force it. 
Yeah. If it doesn't feel natural, move on. There's so many people that are out there, but if you've done your best job and they're like, uh-huh, yep, um, or I'm just going to talk for 55 of the 60 minutes yeah. and you're just going to shut the hell up and I'm going to yeah. impress you on everything and you just go, this person wasn't for me. No, I need to move on because you yeah. know they're not your people and sure. we really need to go with our gut in regards to that. I think it's an important element. No, I, I completely agree. And even two more tips that I would have for networking is like, one is, like you said, when you're with somebody, give them the full attention. Put your phone away. Obviously, I have my phone here, but that's because I have questions and stuff that I want to cover. I won't take offense yeah, to it. Yeah, you won't take offense to it. But people can also tell, am I on my phone because I'm like using oh it for God, a purpose yeah. or am I texting somebody? But the second thing is fortune is in the follow-up. If you say that you're going to connect somebody uh -huh. to somebody, don't do it a month later. Yes. Sure, they'll be appreciative of it, but just do it literally as you're walking out of the meeting yep. because then that person now sees you're a good person, they like you, and you just gave them a connection out of like just the goodness of your heart. Yep. And that's like a big thing that I really try to do is after every lunch, there's some fields that I just don't do business with, right? right? Like I, I don't use specific types of professionals, but if they work with other types of professionals that are in my network and they know some, and they're like, I need a connection to all these types of people, how much work does it take to send a group text message real quick connecting somebody and hopefully it turns into business for them? Yep. And then that person will also remember you because you tried to help them grow, even though I might not specifically be able to help them grow. Yep. Yeah. And that leads to that important question when you are networking with somebody individually or with a couple of people, who do you get your most referrals from? What sort of professional? Because if I've just met somebody, I'm not going to refer them business because I don't know them. I got to get to know them, yeah. but I can introduce them all day long. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I get most of my business from chiropractors. Great. If I come across a chiropractor, yeah. would a good text, email, would that be a good yeah, way to best. get over? Yeah, what works best? And, and I would also say, don't say, oh, I've got somebody. And yeah. I'll tell you the reason why is because of what you said, that surprise, all of a sudden, boom, boom. Hey, Joe, mm -hmm. Laura. I want to introduce you to Laura. I just met Joe. He is an amazing personal injury attorney. Da 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 da. He does great work. Joe, Laura is a chiropractor. She da da da. I think you guys should meet because of X, Y, and Z. And then I'm off. Mm. But it's a surprise. You're like, holy cow, I just met this guy. Yeah. He didn't even talk about it, but he did ask the question of who do you get most of your referrals from? Because that's an easy way, because you know. Our networks are huge, right? Yeah. And we are connectors. And it's important for us to go, okay, who does Joe get his referrals from? If I know somebody in that, yeah. then I can start I can start um, not only helping you out, but I'm helping Laura out because she's a chiropractor. Yeah. She needs a good person. And then she can get to know you. And then she can refer you business because I might be able to for, refer you one person, mm -hmm. whereas that chiropractor can refer you 10 in a year. That's more powerful. So introductions, I also think that they're sometimes even more powerful than a referral because if it's a good fit, that person can send you so much business, which is what we want. We want to have those referral partners. And the other thing is when you're first meeting somebody, you can't really totally trust them, trust yeah. them. I don't know how good they are. Yeah. But as you get to know them, then it's like, okay, I can refer them business, no problem. Yeah. And something that came to mind when you were talking is just like also when you said like power partners, right? People that you work well with. Yeah. So like for me, for example, I work well with chiropractors, obviously, because I send people. Oh my yeah, God, right? I know that. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> and so because I work well with chiropractors, I send a lot of business to them. Right. Now, here's the thing, though. You want to have the mentality of not expecting somebody from other something from others when you're networking. But the truth of the matter is this. If I have one chiropractor that I send two cases and he sends me one for every two cases, I should probably send that chiropractor more business. Mm -hmm. And if I have a chiropractor like a lot of my chiropractors that I send a bunch of business and they've never sent me one case back, I probably should put my time and effort into other chiropractors. Yes. So it's like also recognizing that even though you're doing, like, obviously you want to do things from a good intention place, but there are relationships that are better than other relationships. Amen. And I think that's what you were talking about too a yes. bit. And so you just have to make sure that you're constantly refining and finding those and just getting benefits for the sake of giving other people benefits too. Yeah. But <clears throat> one of the things that you had brought up is you have to track it. Yeah. That is one thing that attorneys are horrible at yeah. is where did you get your business? No. I don't know. Oh, I know. 
Right. I know you. I know you're very because we've had but conversations ju- no. about. But that, I'll say though. that I just started doing that this last year really well. Before and isn't that, it wonderful, dude? It. We literally now like. We, we, well, so, okay. So for any lawyer that's listening to this, if you don't have a CRM, which is a case management software, you need to get your head out of your butt <laughs> and you need to get a case management software today. Okay. <laughs> you should be tracking everything for the sake of the fact that, you know, if you track things, you will get more business and you'll be able to thank the people that give you yes. business. We now know where every referral has come from in the last two years, exactly who gave them. We know how much money we made per person and we are able to thank them proportionately because the truth of the matter is the people that are your number one supporters are always going to be your, well, not always, but most of the time they're going to be your best supporters. Yep. So you should thank and cherish and appreciate those people on a deep level. Take them to dinner, hang out with them, send them nice gifts, find out what they want. Don't send them what you want. Don't send them a hat with your logo on it. <laughs> send them tickets to their favorite sports game. Send them like, send them their favorite bottle of whiskey. What yes. is important to them? Yes. And like, as I've gained more success, I realize it's in correlation to like the way I properly take care of the people that take care of me. Yep. And the more I take care of them, the more it's turned into more success on my end. Yep. You're yeah. right on. And and knowing your best referral sources enables you to send them their, their favorite yep. whiskey. If you don't know, you're behind the eight ball. You need to then figure it out as quickly as possible yeah. so that you can actually take care of them. And it doesn't need to be... I, I, I had one person, um, she was a coach, and I sent her a journal just a little journal, and it had something very personal on it. Cost me fifteen bucks. Yeah, she still talks about that. Yeah, still talks about that. And you're like, that is because it was very personalized towards her. She loves writing in journals, yeah. and I've gotten so much business from her because of something as small as that. Yeah. But it's that personal touch that you had talked about. Yeah. The other aspect that I would say, if any lawyers that are listening to this is identify your five biggest referral sources. I call it the gang of five. You should be spending more time with your gang of five than anybody else that's in your network because these are your best referral sources. That's where your money is going to be. You need to be taking them to lunch on a regular basis, taking them to ball games, taking them to the Lakers, whatever it may be that they like, you need to be taking care of them as much as possible because if you've identified that they are and you're tracking where all your business is coming from, It'll be very easy to go, holy cow, I'm getting a lot of business from this person. I need to just take care of them. What is a $50 lunch yeah. when they are sending you a crap load of business? Thousands and thousands yes, of dollars. Yes, thousands, uh, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars yeah. in your case. Yeah, no, I mean, this was something I, t- I talked about actually on the last podcast I did, which was like, we have a process when we settle a case to, for my case manager to reach out to the person that referred the case and send them a gift. But on the bigger cases, I realized the other day, like like we send like sometimes just a text message and just like, hey, can we send you a gift to your favorite restaurant, which is like the intention is good and pure. But the truth of the matter is people can feel it when it's like even more of a true intention. I Like the lead attorney should be picking up the phone, calling them, sending a huge thank you and like taking the time to appreciate this person. Yep. And on bigger cases, like you said, like. These are like, I mean, the truth of the matter is I get most of my cases from friends and family. I should be going and taking them to dinner, hanging out with them. And not only that, but as you thank these people, you're building that relationship, you're making it stronger, and they're going to just be more and more built into your network and try to support you, and you can support them in many different ways. Amen. Especially because the first referral is always the hardest. Yeah. The second one is is very easy, but the first one is always the hardest. And so we need to take care of those individuals as best as we possibly can. I actually got a um, a referral card. Mm-hmm. Somebody had written a um, card to me, and it was a very nice card for business yeah. that I had sent over to them. And they killed it. And I'm saying it in a bad way because they put a gift card in there. Oh. And it wasn't just any gift card. It was a $10 gift card. Now, if they didn't even have that at all, just said, Gary, thanks so much for the referral. And it was just a handwritten. I would have been stoked on that. I would have been like, okay, yeah. because it's personalized, right? But to just put that little thing in there, it's like, oh, you just killed it. And their business card too. Yeah. And I'm like, you're, you're, you're just like, okay, all right. You know, it, it really felt cheap. And yeah. I'm not saying cheap in a like, oh, you need to spend $400 and give me a $400 gift card. No, that's not it at all. It was, there was no thought behind it. Yeah. It was almost like, hey, I got a referral. Could you, you know, to their assistant, could you send over a card to them? Yeah. Uh, That's great. And it just, 
it left a bad taste in my mouth and yeah. it, and it w- had nothing really to do with them at all. Yeah. Um, and I was like, am I feeling, am I like that pretentious a-hole that, uh, but it wasn't because I've gotten people that have sent me cards that just said, Gary, thanks so much. Or stood up at a provisor meeting and said, yeah. Hey, thank I love that aspect. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I will do that again and again. Yeah. So I guess a couple of things come to mind is one, I, I think it comes back to like, what are your intentions behind something? And people can feel that. But yep. when it comes to the cards, right? I definitely, when I get just a generic card with just a signature and it just looks like something printed, didn't even write a message or anything. <clears throat> personally, I hate those. I, agree. I think it's just you nudging me and saying, give me business. But like I do something and I guess, let me ask your advice because yeah. you've gotten my Uber and Lyft gift cards, right? Before, yes. have you? See, like, I feel like, I, in my opinion, I feel like we put a lot of time and love and attention to this because I, like, spend, like, a month writing that message. I'm, like, I want it to be witty. I want it to be funny. I want it to be positive for people. And then, like, and then like we, at the end of it, we put a bunch of funny stickers in it because I just want people to laugh. And then we give in. So this is the one part that I feel is a bit salesy. But it's, like, I also, it's, like, it costs me a lot. Like, it's not thanking people for referral. I'm just giving this for people to remember us for Uber and Lyft accidents. So we give an Uber gift card. And I understand it's $10. It's not a lot of money. And if they gave me business, they would turn in a lot more. But I'm doing it in the hope of receiving business. So I guess, like, do you think that's too salesy? Do you think it would be better just to send the letter? Or, like, like I, I just, like, I guess, do you hear what I'm asking? I totally do. Yeah. And I remember getting it. Yeah. And I personally liked it because Uber is you. Okay. You know, now, if it was a Starbucks card, I'd been like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But for instance, I got from somebody a toothbrush, one of those electronic toothbrushes, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which was, I was like, what the hell? Yeah. I still remember it. Yeah. I brought it up like five yeah, yeah. freaking times at yeah. Provisors. Yeah. And it was amazing. But here's the thing is. It has nothing th- to do with my business. That though, but yeah. no, no, no. That though has to do with you yeah. as a person. Yeah. And then when I got the second one, I I don't know if you remember this, but yeah. I'm like, you made a mistake, you jackass. And yeah. you're like, you didn't read the card, you dumbass. And I was yeah. like, oh God. I went home and I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. All right. <laughs> I admit it. Total idiot well, no, because it was for her, yeah, right? No, because dude, okay, so I read a book called Giftology. Have you ever heard of it? I have met the owner of okay, Giftology. You met John Rulin. Yes. Okay. Yes. So have you read the book though? I have. Okay, fantastic. So that yes. book, obviously, if anybody wants to understand how, why, and where, and just what to do when it comes to gifts, it's a very short read. It it's is. like a hundred pages, Simple. but it's also a quick listen if you just want to listen to it. If you also like you see, in an industry like mine. I don't know who my potential clients are going to be a lot of time because it it really could be anyone that gets into an accident out there. So it's hard to target that person. Mm -hmm. But for somebody like um, like you, Drachnik, or like that's my social media manager or like Gary, like Gary knows the exact people he can reach out to. And if you know the people that you can reach out to, you can give them a gift that is exactly relatable to them, Mm -hmm. something that's very special and intentional. And that is a way to get business when you're able to literally laser target exactly who and what you're going to give. So he's talking about how I gave people gifts of really nice Sonicare toothbrushes. The book talks about wanting to give people gifts that can be reused on a regular basis or like if possible daily. And so I was like, what is the best toothbrush that's on the market? <laughs> I, I think it's, it's it's an awesome gift because I think a lot of people don't even have a super nice toothbrush. Right here. And, and then he, I think it was either you or somebody else brought up a good point. It might have been Nicole. Nicole's like, Nicole's like Cyrus. So Nicole is also in our, in our networking group. Yeah. She's like Cyrus, her husband was like, where's my toothbrush? And he brought up a good oh. point where it's like, this is also something they talked about in the book. It's like, don't just give a husband, if they have a wife, a yeah. gift, and yeah. it's not fair. There's a team. And yeah. then not only that, but now that person, their sitting other, loves you too. Yeah. And so now you have two people loving you. And also, for example, let's say like for you, he knows that he wants to work with this lawyer. Don't just give the lawyer the gift, give his secretary a gift. Because really, she's the one that makes the decisions and probably chooses who to send the business to. You should be sending them both a gift. So these are all like little things that I've like learned and we've gotten much better at them. But Everybody can feel the little differences and the it little can. intentions. One of the, <laughs> so you know how I'm, I, I'm not knocking um, gift cards. Yeah. Because I had a potential client, an attorney, who I had been for years trying to get his business. And I found out that he was having knee surgery mm. and he was going to be out for two weeks. Yeah. I got his secretary 
to give me his home address. Nice. I sent his wife a $250 Grubhub gift card saying, I know what a pain in the ass he is. This is specifically for you because he's going to want you yeah. to, to be there, make all of his meals. And I hope that this will take away the strain because I know what a pain in the ass is. He called me up. <clears throat> you effing son of a bitch. My wife loves you, was wondering what you do, and now wonders why am I not working with you? He became a client. Best two hundred and fifty dollars I ever spent. Yeah, and I, and I still am like he still talks about it yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, and so it's not the gift card. It's not like oh, it's a gift card, but it's the intention behind it. Yeah. and it's like your your Sonic toothbrush. It's the intention that really yeah. pulls people in. They go, I remember that. That was very kind. Yes, I will refer you business, or they may not refer you business, yeah. but you're giving it a try as opposed to, eh, I'm not going to do anything. You know, and and I do agree with giftology. I mean, yeah, what what they what they have come up with, I think is is really amazing, good. amazing, yeah. and and it is an easy read too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And the, and the last thing I would say about gifts too is if you're gonna buy something something, if you get them something cheap, they're gonna think you're cheap. You have mm -hmm. to remember everything you do is like a reflection. It's like we actually stopped doing Sonicare toothbrushes because of the plastic impact that it has on the planet, but we found ones that are just as comparable, just as nice, but they're made out of bamboo tips. And so now it's like sustainable, so it doesn't keep ruining the planet yeah. with the tips that you have to yeah, keep yeah. getting replaced. Yeah. Like, it's like, have you ever read the book, uh, Simon Sinek, Start With Why? Yes, yes. Remember the celery test? Yes. So it's like, what are you about? And like, I mean, like, I really want to obviously help the planet in any way I can. That's just like something that's personal to me. So it's yeah. like, we should do those things. And even right now, like the girls that work out here in the in the kitchen area, I saw there was a bunch of plastic utensils. I walked up to them, I'm like, hey, you should tell management to do like, like, like eco-friendly, like plastic yeah. utensils. It costs the same thing now. And it's just like, it's the little things, but everybody around you can feel those intentions when yep. you, when, and it goes from the bottom up. Yep. And if yeah. they can't, they're not part of your tribe. No, they're not part of your tribe. And that's okay. Yeah. Not everybody likes Joe. No. They don't. There's something wrong with them. But yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> so I'm really sick. <laughs> yeah, really. All right. So let's dive into your business a bit. So tell us, uh, LinkedIn for lawyers, I think that's pretty self-explanatory in the sense that obviously I want the full explanation, but you probably yeah. help help attorneys <laughs> with with LinkedIn. Catchy, yeah, huh? Yeah, catchy. So nailed it. But sometimes, sometimes, right, that's like the key is like having a name that is catchy. Like for me, for example, yeah. right, I had the name, I was about to talk about the fact that your name, LinkedIn for lawyers, right? Yeah. So like my firm, we, I just went through a huge change. We're actually announcing on Monday, we're going from accident lawyers firm to Jonas accident lawyers. And I, and I wanted to bring this up because I have a caveat to those to people out there who choose too generic of a name. Mm -hmm. My name was too goddamn generic. Yeah. So people didn't know the difference between me, accident lawyers firm, I accident lawyers, AA accident lawyers, accident guys. Like there is a name that is too generic, but just knowing you and knowing this industry, I don't think there's a lot of other businesses called LinkedIn for lawyers. So, no. it, so it's a fantastic name. Yeah, but you. in my space, I thought it was a great name. Do your research. Don't be lost in an ocean of the same names. Right. So we decided to go all in on my personal brand. And that's why I'm switching that. Yeah. But just be careful with your names. That's that's totally. the piece of advice that I have yep. there. So yeah, yep. please tell us about LinkedIn for lawyers and what J2 Marketing is from a bird's eye view. Sure. So LinkedIn for lawyers um, we started LinkedIn for lawyers, me and my business partner, um, at the beginning of October, 2022. Mm. So we are seven months into it. Um, okay. and it's basically four different forms. It starts with, um, an online course. We have mm. three different courses that teach attorneys how to build their book, uh, book of business. And they go through all sorts of modules, um, and it basically gives them everything soup to nuts, what they need to know mm. in order to be successful on LinkedIn. Okay. That's one aspect. The second aspect is LinkedIn coaching, where we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So there's accountability. There's a, did you do this? Let me see that post. What are you doing? Why are you posting it here? Yeah. What do you, you know, how do you are optimizing your profile and that kind of stuff. There's also a service where we will optimize their profile for them. We will do it the whole entire thing so that they come across in the most effective way when they're marketing their personal brand and their company brand. And then there's the fourth one, which is the outsourced mm -hmm. LinkedIn. We will do everything for them. We optimize their profile. We add um, uh, targeted connections. We also post- Through like Sales Navigator? No. It is all on the free, on the free version. Yeah. Oh. So when I say adding- 
targeted connections. So for instance, for you, it would be adding chiropractors on there, but we are really, really targeted to their target market. And we're trying to expand that as much as possible. Um, and unfortunately, LinkedIn only allows you 100 connection requests per week that you can send out. Um, but then we will post for them. We will write the content. We will do all of the content for them. And then the, the, the last one, and this is really where I think is a sweet spot, <clears throat> is engage. We will engage for them as them. Now, a lot of attorneys are like, oh, my God, you're going to be talking for me. We don't do anything political, anything negative. Yeah. But what we have found is a lot of attorneys say, you know what, Gary? LinkedIn sucks. I don't get any business from it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's a total waste of time. The reason why is because they don't have a strategy. They really have no guidance whatsoever. They open it up and they go, uh, I guess I'll go through my feed, see what's on there, yeah. yada, yada. Oh, I've got some people that want to connect with me in my network. I'll look up my notification. But they really do not have a strategy or plan. We put that strategy and plan for them. Well, I just want to comment. I felt the same way for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to say to those people, and what I've learned is how much attention – are you putting into LinkedIn? How much time are you putting into it? Are you actually treating it like the tool that it is meant to be? Right. If you, I mean, like anything in life, the more time and attention and care that you put into something, the more you're going to get out of it. I agree. And if you're using it like a social media platform, it can be beneficial, mm -hmm. but it also, I, I watched an Instagram post the other day, which said, I would rather get 800 views on LinkedIn than getting 8,000 views on social media mm -hmm. because those are actual business people that have the intention of being there for the purpose of business Correct. and they're there for a specific reason. So if you're in a B2B and you're not using LinkedIn, get your head out of your butt again and, yep. and call Gary. And it's not very <laughs> difficult. It really isn't. And one of the things that I think that my <clears throat> business partner and I do great is we simplify the crap out of it yeah. so that they spend actually less time on it and actually get results. That's the key thing because yeah. you're, as a lawyer, your number one asset is your time. I mean, how yeah. many times have we talked about your time, your time? But it's so true. Your time is so valuable. So how do you pull up LinkedIn onto your screen and actually have a plan so that you spend less time? In fact, I push my um, my clients that I'm doing coaching. I say, put a timer for 15 minutes. When you open it up, set the timer. When that timer goes off, you immediately click out of it. I don't care if you're in the middle of doing something, you click out of it. They're like, well, what do I do with that stuff? I go, you come back the next day. And they're like, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, why not? Well, it pushes them. And then they get better the next day, better the next day, better the next day. It's like working out. They become better and better but they're only focused in on a couple of different regions. And when they do that, they actually build great relationships because one of the things I love to do, and, and I know you'll appreciate this, I love to look at LinkedIn like, you're, like you are networking in person. Mm. So when you go to network in person, what do you do? You dress up, yeah, right? You look good. Yeah. That is optimizing your profile yeah. so that your brand is just right on. People know exactly who you service, what are the benefits that they're going to get, right? So that's optimizing yeah. it. Then what happens is you walk into it. Who do you look for? People you know, people you don't know. If your intention is to build new relationships, you go over to the people who you don't know. And what do you do? You introduce yourself to them, right? Yeah. You go up to them. Oh, hi, Joe. I'm Gary. Yeah. I put out my hand. That's me sending you a connection request on LinkedIn. Yeah. And what do you do? You shake their hand. You're like, hey, Gary, I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. That's yeah. you accepting it. Now, here's the difference. On LinkedIn, I don't do anything now. I just You just accepted my connection request, and it's as if I walk away from you. Imagine if I'm like, oh, hey, Joe, I'm Gary. And you're like, hey, Gary, nice to meet you. And I turned around and I walked away. You go, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Like, what's wrong with you, right? I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I think that I felt under the victim of just wanting the more connections, the better, because I thought it looked cool to have more connections. So there like, is a bit but, to but, but that. I, I'm saying you're right. This is a completely different platform. It's, it's business. It is. It's when you're connecting with somebody, you should be connecting with them for a purpose. Correct. And this is something that I completely misconstrued. And when I'm hearing you talk, I now understand what my mistake was with it in many different ways. Yeah. And I also, too, like started getting frustrated with LinkedIn because, you know, I'm a personal injury attorney. So all SEO and marketing people know that they that I spend the most on marketing in, than any right. other in the world. Right. And so I got harassed by so many messages on LinkedIn on a daily basis from SEO people 
I got sick of LinkedIn. One of the things that I find is attorneys will post a lot. They'll use a marketing agency that posts mm. four or five times mm. a week, right? Because the marketing agency is telling them, the more you post, the better. Yeah. And let me tell you, when you look at it visually, it looks fantastic. Beautiful, good graphics. Yeah. Content, eh, okay, but it looks great, right? And so you'll see people that have 20,000 followers. Yeah. And they're posting four or five times a week. And you look at the engagement, and that's the most important thing. You yeah. look at the engagement, and they're getting two likes. Yeah. One comment, five likes. How is it that you have 20,000 and you only have five likes? Yeah. Well, this is what we teach in LinkedIn for Lawyers mm -hmm. is how do you take that where you can have 1,000 followers and you will have 30 comments? Comments are so much more important than likes because you're engaging. I agree likes and, are not that important. Yeah, right. Because nobody looks at likes. Everybody looks at all the comments that are made, yeah. right? And so we need to make sure that we are making comment-worthy posts mm. that, that actually do that. And when you do that, what happens is the algorithm kicks in for you in regards to the LinkedIn algorithm, because the LinkedIn algorithm is different than the other algorithms. Mm. But one of the most important things is that when somebody comments, that actually gives you more um, a bigger megaphone, let's just say. More people see your post because of their comments. Now, one of the things about sharing, so reposting somebody else's thing, I'm gonna repost it. Um, the LinkedIn algorithm actually goes against you when you do this. Why? And this is the stupid, I, I'm not, I'm not saying so that sharing is a bad thing. Okay. I'm saying that I am always looking at what is the best thing for the algorithm when the when you're working with the algorithm yeah. against uh, as opposed to against it. So when you repost something, if you're reposting it because one you think it's great information or I just want to give props to this person, I would actually say if it's really good information, rewrite it, don't use their thing and put them as the quote unquote author. I just read this post that they said this and it's like one or two great things about right. it and tag them in there. So you're still giving them credit and then off and running. It's an original post because that will actually be better for you and the, the reach mm -hmm. because we're always trying to, it's very similar to Google. We're always trying to get our clients up to the top. So when they open it up, I want them to see Joe. Oh, there's Joe. God, yeah. every time I open it up, damn Joe. And and here's his his video from his podcast, or here's yeah. here is his picture or whatever it is. Um, so we always recommend if you're going to share something, if it's not on a personal basis, rewrite so that it is comes across as a whole new post. Just an original post is much, much better for the algorithm because you don't want to work against it, you want to work for it. So I'm going to disagree with you kindly okay. and because from what I've oh, read... Oh, don't be kind. Well, I'm not going to be kind. When it, comes to, when it comes to actually sharing, I've read that that's actually the most important statistic when it comes to dealing with the algorithm because the more that people share it to their friends and family, it actually shows that it's more relevant information and that is what actually makes it go more viral or more people will engage. I think it's probably a combination of the comments and the sharing. I think that liking is really not that important, but a combination of the two is really where you want to be getting the engagement and also, what are your intentions? Are you creating something just to be shared with others for the purpose of just viewing? Or are you trying to create something that is actually trying to engage people and have a conversation? Yep. And so I think it goes back down to what, why are you doing it? So one of the things that I'm going to disagree with you on yeah. is sharing used to be really good algorithm-wise. It's no longer. They just changed it last year. And because they changed it, all of the LinkedIn experts are telling people sharing is not as good as it was before. And because, you know, with Google is the same thing. Algorithms change all the time. We need to yeah, adapt. So you're on saying it. just specifically with LinkedIn. Correct. Oh, just with LinkedIn. Okay, got That's it. it. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Instagram. Okay. I'm not talking about got Facebook. It. I'm not talking about Twitter. Just LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. If you comment on something, you don't you know, like you want to like and comment, mm. but you want to go in the order of commenting it and then liking it. Mm. Okay, so it's like a weird thing, right? Because you look at it and you're like, oh, this is really good. I'm going to like it. I'm going to make a comment. 
If you like it first and then you comment on it, it's a 20% de decrease on your post. This is, you're not even doing your own post because you're going against the algorithm. Why, do the, why does LinkedIn do that? We have no idea. We have zero idea. But we do know that if you comment and then like it, it gives you actually a 30% boost. That's a very important aspect. And that's why I say there are certain little things that you can do on LinkedIn that are going to actually help you. But most people don't study the algorithm. Mm -hmm. They don't. And we study it like crazy. We look at it. We, we, we listen to all sorts of um, stuff on LinkedIn. But that's why people pay us so much money is because they're like, I don't have time to, to figure all this stuff out. Tell me what the hell I need to do. I was just saying that you want to work with the algorithm. Yeah. With even when it changes. Yeah. Um, but well, I mean, these things are also changing on a regular basis. Exactly. So it's great that you're being on top of it. The question I wanted to ask you is, so you have a partner. Do you have like a whole team that helps implement all these things or is it just yes. you and one other person? No, no. We have a team that actually implements it. And that's where we have to build a ton of trust with our clients in order to actually be engaging for them. Of course. Because that's really where the secret sauce comes into play. But we don't do anything political. We don't do anything negative. Yeah. If it comes on that line, we walk away. Okay. From the post, just from engaging from the post. But we also tap into the law of reciprocation, which means that if I comment on your post, the likelihood of you commenting on my post when you see it yeah. goes up dramatically. And you know how this is. So we tap into that. Um, we tap into a couple of the different things in regards to social proof. Social proof is enormous. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love Provisors is because when we stand up and give somebody a thank you, that's social proof. It's also one of the most powerful marketing things that we can do. And so we need to tap into all of those different things for our clients so that they get the most amount of business. And it's all looking at all of the analytics, but it's also enabling us to say, this is working, this isn't working, let's tweak it, let's move it. Because if you're not looking at that kind of stuff, sort of like what we talked about earlier, where you got to measure it, if you're not measuring it, you're going off a of gut, and let me tell you, gut sucks. You know, it just does. I mean, there's certain times that your gut's yeah, really good. Yeah, you follow your but, but when it comes to business, you know, numbers you don't lie. Really, yeah, you numbers really don't lie. Track things. Yep. And it, and it's just beneficial for you to understand things, and and then you can also follow your gut in a more efficient way. Yeah. Because there is ways to follow your gut and to be super analytical about things, and and I think that you should start from like that intuition place. But mm -hmm. the better you get at tracking things, just everything else will cascade yeah. in a better way too. Yeah. And I find that it will usually give you yeah. the affirmation that your gut is right. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, one of my good. one of my assistants thinks I'm crazy because we have like this Google sheet with like 20 different sheets now where we track all this different yeah. stuff. And she's like, we need another sheet. I'm like, another yes, sheet. Yes, we do. It's time for another <laughs> I'm sheet. with you. Yeah, and then it's just like, but everything is like perfectly organized. Yeah. It's exactly where it needs to be. We keep track so of everything. And then it's, it's it pay, we'll pay dividends in the long run. And yeah. one of my business coaches early on in my career, he was the same way. He like had all these different sheets for all these different things. And I was like, dude, screw you. I don't have time for any of this. <laughs> and then I'm like, now without him years later, like I know exactly what the hell he was telling me yeah. now. And I get it. Keep track of everything. And it's, it is. And it, at some point it will be beneficial for you to use it later on down the road. I agree. And you can make better decisions. Yeah. Quicker. Yeah. That's what it's all about as being a business owner. You've got to be able to do that. Boom, 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 boom. You got yeah. metrics behind it. It makes it so much easier. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's also talk about J2 Marketing. What yeah. do you do there? So J2 Marketing is um, helping attorneys become very confident in their marketing and business development. We do everything from teaching them how to close business to how do you network, um, how do you do a speaking engagement, social media, but what we're trying to do is get the best person out there. And so we always start out with foundational work because without foundational work, everything is, all the strategies are crap. Um, and so we need to make sure that their messaging is solid. It is right on. So messaging, messaging is a very complex thing. Um, and the, the short answer is I need to get to know the client extremely well, but most importantly, I need to understand the benefits that their clients get from them. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that most people make is they say, so Joe, what do you do for a living? And you go, I'm a personal injury attorney and I go to court for my clients. I make sure that I communicate with them, da, 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 da. Okay, those are all features. We don't make decisions based on features. We make decisions based on benefits. I mean, we need to be hardcore benefit, 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 benefit. And when we pull that out, when I pull that out for my clients, it makes them go, oh, this is so easy. 
And I always want them to say that because they're like, oh, well, I was thinking I needed to be cute with this. I'm like, no, there are four major benefits that people get from working with uh, professionals. It is financial, emotional, physical, and spiritual. We need to identify all four of those things on what it is of why they should use you. Financial, emotional, spiritual, and physical? Correct. Yep. And so when you have that, then messaging becomes very easy because you're focused in on that, 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 as opposed to, I do this, I do this, I do this. Um, So, But messaging is such an important element because you need to be memorable and you need to key into the brain, which is called the old brain, where the old brain makes the decisions and the old brain makes decisions based on the benefits that they receive, not the features. You're calling it the limbic. So it's a, there's the limbic brain and then there's the neocortex, right? And one of them is emotional. It's the and limbic. One of, yeah. And, so and it's called the lizard brain, yeah, you know, because yeah. it's the old brain, right? Yeah. So, so it's just important to really hit into that. Um, yeah. And um, so one, so this is a good segue though. Yeah. Because on LinkedIn, you had asked, can I put yeah, personal my, my stuff question, on there? My question right? was basically because I'm going through a reframe and rebranding from Accident Lawyers Firm to Jonas Accident Lawyers. Essentially, we're yeah. going all in on my personal brand. Yeah. And and I post a lot on all different social media platforms. And I was posting some stuff for my trips around the world, like, for example, in Rome recently. And I was like, after hearing you speak, I'm like, I'm not sure maybe if I should be or sh- if I shouldn't be. So I'll ask you the question. Should I be posting things like my trip and my journeys around Rome and traveling where I got to experience life? And it just it kind of goes with who I am as a person. Is that appropriate on LinkedIn? Absolutely it is. And this is the big misnomer. Most people are like, that's for Facebook. That's for Instagram. And I'm sick and tired of hearing that shit because sometimes some stuff is. Yeah. Oversharing on you know really personal stuff. I get it. It shouldn't be on LinkedIn. However, here's the key thing. And this is, makes it so much easier. When you have something personal like Rome, tie it back to your business. Okay. You went to Rome for a reason that made you a better businessman. Mm. That's the messaging because you want to add value because here's the thing that people don't want. I don't want to see your vacations. I don't want to see you throwing this in my face. Fuck you, Joe. Joe of da 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 da. And I've said that many a times to you yeah. in, a, in a very loving way. Yeah, but I but, understand it. But but uh, it's it's that jealousy aspect. People don't want to see that on LinkedIn. They Got don't. It. However, though, They do want to tie the two together. And I'll give you a a really good example. Back in June, I posted a video, which actually was taken down by uh, LinkedIn. And the video was me getting sober. Like, um, what was it? Um, uh, 10 years. How did I not remember that? But I was 10 (laughs) years sober. Like, this is, I should be drinking still. Um, but, But it was just a, hey, but I... Put it to my network and hanging around the right people, yeah. making sure that your community supports you as yeah. opposed to put you down, right? And it went, it was, it is the best engaged video that I've ever done. And it yeah. was like, okay, I why? I seeing all the comments. I'm like, what the heck just happened here? Seriously, it I just was like it jealous. blew up. I'm like, what the heck? But it's because I tied it to business. business. Even though it was a video, I still yeah. tied it to business. So your Rome thing is great because people see that and the freedom. Okay, so you can say, I have been working for a year before I went to Rome to structure my company so that I could be out of town, right? Because those are the things you did. That sharing with people will inspire them, it will educate them, and they'll be like, okay, that's really cool. You have the cool picture and they go, that's what I could do too. That is a good business post. I mean, dude, you're you're like, making me realize like, I mean, like it all goes back to back to the intention behind things. So it's like, I just need to take a little bit of extra time. So the next time I write the captions, we'll just have a section for normal social medias. And then there will, I will literally write separate captions for business. Exactly and right. And I can do that. For the post. same yeah, post. Yeah, for the same post. Because yep. it's like, and this is what Gary Vee said. I remember watching a video with him too. He's like, you can literally use the same content for multiple platforms and just have different things like framed a different exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Captions are the most important thing yeah. in it because it really pulls up why. Yeah. I want to know why you're posting this. If it is yeah. to throw it in my face, I'm thinking you're a jerk. Yeah. I'm thinking you're the arrogant lawyer that's up there and says, look at me. Yeah. I mean, look, you know about super lawyers. Yeah. Super lawyers is a pay to play. Yeah, I know. The attorneys know this. Nobody else does. I won't pay, so they won't let me play. Exactly. <laughs> I just and, think it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's my honor that I got super lawyer. Oh, um, so you paid 10 grand a year the, so that they can so give you the So what they tag? should be saying is, I paid yeah. to get this thing. So you just know? so everybody knows, let's also 
give a short si- segue here. There's about 20 organizations that do that. They're like top 40 lawyers in California, right. top 100 lawyers, top this, top that, top personal injury lawyers. They literally, what happens is somebody gets a trademark name for a top something. They then reach out to you with an email and they say, hey, for this much money a year, you can use our badge. We'll send you a $300 exactly plaque, right. which they make you pay for the plaque. And then yep. you can put it up at your place. And they're a completely fake organization. Yep. They have no events. They're not actually related to anything. And they're completely false. Yep. So sorry, I that's apply. my anger. Super but, lawyers is a little bit more legit because they make lawyers nominate lawyers before they can be like nominated to be a super lawyer. But yeah. every one of my friends and their mother is a super lawyer. Exactly. And so like they all pay to play. Yeah. So, and that goes back to what's the intention, but here's the thing. And here's why I forcefully yeah. push back on you about the Rome thing is because it's you. Yeah. You got to be putting it out there. However, yeah. It needs to tie into business. Yeah. And you know how it can tie into business. Yeah. This is where the content is really rich. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, no, this is you, damn it. Yeah. You know, and if it's a if it's a picture of doing something stupid, how does that tie back? How does that tie back? How does that yeah. tie back? Because you do want to give value to your network. When you do, they yeah. will engage. That's when you get the 30 comments. Yeah. That's and that's what we teach in LinkedIn yeah. for lawyers, or we do it for them so that they don't have to think about it. Because a lot of people are like, I'm posting all the time and I'm getting shit out of this. I'm yeah. like, right, because you're not posting the right stuff or it's not tying yeah, back and to people it. People can feel that it's something that you just posted exactly. on everything because it all comes back to the intention. Yes. And it's this just is garbage. such a good I'm really glad I had you today for this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad that I had you today because this is yeah. this is a great reframe because I mean like I'm I'm figuring all this stuff out, right? And I mean with anything when you're changing the name of your business, it's not a small endeavor. And right no. and then like also too, like I went through like a struggle, like am I changing it for like an ego purpose or am I just changing it because like I just feel that I'm the brand and I'm really trying to put out specific messaging. So it's trying to like weigh all those things and balance it yeah. and making sure that I'm attracting the right people and yep. And it sounds like I'm I'm on the right path. You are, but here's the other thing is most attorneys, and I would say 99% of the attorneys are not like you. Yeah. They don't spend the time on doing this. No. And, the, and their whole thing is, look, I'm not a marketing person. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I get it. And that's why yeah. we put this together is because we want to save LinkedIn or we want to save lawyers time. We want to save them energy. We can make them a shitload of money. And it's like, okay, yeah. but it's those little things like, okay, Rome, good. Like, yeah. we just need to frame it in this way. Because when we're talking to our clients about content, it, you know, it's like, okay, let's look at your calendar. Where are you going? Could you take a picture there? Yeah. And then we're going to reframe it in a way that's going to pull it all together that go, oh, my God, Joe, you are like the guy because yeah. we get you. We understand you. Mm. Um, and they don't have to be ultra vulnerable and say, well, I was abused when I was a child. OK, yeah. that kind that's of stuff. Me. That's my story. But right? but yeah. but it is. But, you know, if you reframe it in a way that ties back to the, the community, yeah. to your clients, then it's a good thing. Yeah. But just to put it, just to put it out there. Yeah. And I see tons of people do. And I'm like, not going to do anything. And it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't do shit. And you go, they go, why? That's what we show them. And that's what I'm so passionate about, because I love it when I can see somebody that goes, oh, I can do it. Like, oh, just like your eyes. You're like, oh, I can do a little bit of yeah. this or a little bit of that. Because there's power in that. Mm-hmm. There's confidence in that. The more you do it, the better off it is. And you become a great you know, marketer. And you more than likely will make a crap load of money. And that's yeah. what we're all in it for is yeah. to make it make more money. We really yeah. are. It's not yeah. this, hey, we're just going to give back to the, you know, yeah. do we do that? Absolutely we do. But yeah. not in, you know, in a marketing and business development sense. we got to bring in money. Because that pays the bills. You have a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, you have to. You have to feed you the do. beast, and the more you grow, you got to feed the beast more and more. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess. Yeah. Since we only have three minutes, I'm yeah. gonna ask you a question that's non-related to any business. Okay. All right. Who's your favorite superhero and why? I would say my favorite superhero is Superman, and the reason why is because he's not afraid of anything. The guy has got these wonderful powers of flying. I've always wanted to fly. I love flying. But he also is kind to people. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, I'm not a big fan of the new DC because they make him into this dark sort of thing. And people like that. I get it. But I yeah. like the old Superman of somebody who is always fighting for good yeah. and also is extremely humble um, individual. So that's my favorite. Yeah. I, I actually Superman's my favorite. Oh yeah, so, okay. so, so yeah, so, so, so I agree with you, and it's and it's and it's for a lot of the same reasons. Yeah. It's just always, I mean, 
he's almost like such a good person. It like makes you like regret a lot of decisions in your own life. Yeah. I'm like I need to get my shit together. Totally. <laughs> but, 100%. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's a he's a great superhero. And, yeah. and what I want to say is thanks so much for coming today. Thank you for if, having like, me. If anybody listens, just as you, if you're a lawyer to a lot of the tips, I mean, even if you're not a lawyer and you're just listening for marketing tips in general on a lot of stuff that we've hit today, I think there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, I'm really excited to have had you. And Thank I you. will definitely see you soon at the next yes. supervisors meeting. And